And my friends, there is breaking news as we continue to cover in detail the story about the new Pope Francis permission to bless same-sex couples. Um, we have more and more bishops coming out uh, against this move, most notably Cardinal Gerhard Müller, the former head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, now the Dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith, headed, of course, by Tucho Fernandez, the very controversial pro-homosexual prelate uh, installed by Pope Francis in that very elevated position. So we have uh, Cardinal Müller's uh, take on it, which is very startling. I'm going to give you the highlights. Please, please go to LifeSiteNews.com for the full story. Also, Archbishop Vigano has come out with a scathing analysis. Again, I'm going to give you some highlights here, but go to LifeSite News for the full story. We are doing ongoing, very detailed coverage at LifeSite News. In fact, so that you can keep track of all of this moving story, which is going very fast, we're doing basically something like a scorecard where you're going to be able to tell a full list of the bishops who is praising this decision and who is rejecting it. And so if you go to lifesightnews.com on the top left-hand side, you will see that document, which will outline the positions of those for and against. Also, the ones in the middle, uh, we can basically ignore because we're looking at those who are taking a strong stand against it or else rejoicing in this absolute disaster. So let me give you the highlights, first of all, from Archbishop Vigano. He makes a very interesting point. And before I get to the headline, I mean, obviously, he calls this, uh, basically, he accuses Francis of being the abomination of desolation, which for all those who of you who cover prophecy or follow prophecy, that's a very significant statement. But his statement should not be lost in just that headline, because what he says is incredibly important. He talks about the fact that this document doesn't warn the sinner of his sin. Now, if you go and read Vatican documents from the past, you will notice that they say wherever there is homosexuals there in a group or whatever, they should be, it can't happen without them being warned of the sin. And it makes total sense. If you're in a, an illicit relationship that is leading you to hell, that is one that's condemned by God, you obviously should be told of this and you shouldn't, it should not be brushed over because if it is, then the minister is doing a grave disservice. So that's the first point Archbishop Vigano makes. But then he talks about, and I'm just going to quote for you. He says, The delirious declaration Fiducia Supplicans, recently published by the parody of the former Holy Office, renamed the Dicastery, definitively pierces the veil of hypocrisy and deception of the Bergoglian hierarchy, showing these false shepherds for what they really are servants of Satan and his most zealous allies, beginning with the usurper who sits an abomination of desolation on the throne of Peter. Very, very strong, tough words from Archbishop Vigano. The fact that Tucho Fernandez's declaration approved by Bergoglio reiterates that blessing an irregular couple ought not to seem like a form of wedding rite and that marriage is only between a man and a woman is part of the strategy of deception, he says. For what is at issue here is not whether marriage can be contracted by two men or two women, but whether persons living in a gravely sinful state can merit as an irregular couple, a blessing imparted by a deacon or priest with the sole precaution that it is not to give the impression of being a liturgical celebration. So this uh, Archbishop Vigano goes on to suggest, hey, they're going to get dressed up, not in wedding clothes, but other clothes. Others are going to be there um, and they will get this blessing. And then they're going to go home and do their celebration or whatnot. It is an utter confusion. And get this, he says, one wonders whether in the race to legitimize sodomy obtained without going so far as to celebrate marriages between sodomites, there is a conflict of interest in those who propose it so insistently. Uh, a not too subtle hint that many of the prelates that are pushing this very thing are themselves homosexual or uh, in favor of homosexuality. So, um, he, this Archbishop Vigno, he also says, this document, together with other more or less official pronouncements, really had as its purpose the good of adulterers, if 
if it was that this had really in purpose the, the, or in mind the good of adulterers, concubiners, and sodomites, it should have pointed out to them the heroism of Christian witness, reminded them of self-sacrifice of our Lord, and asked each one of us and taught them to put their trust in God's grace in order to overcome trials and live in conformity with his will. On the contrary, the document, or Pope Francis, he says, encourages them, blesses them as irregular as if they were not, but at the same time, he deprives them of marriage and this way admits that they are irregular. Bergoglio does not ask them to change their lives, but authorizes a grotesque farce in which two men or two women will be able to appear before a minister of God to be blessed together with their relatives and friends and then celebrate this sinful union with a banquet, the cutting of the cake, and gifts. But it's not a wedding. Let's be clear. So I would encourage you to please read the full document or the full statement from Archbishop Vigano, which was well considered. I mean, if you if you realize he is normally quick off the mark and it took a couple of full couple of days to get the statement out it's because he wanted to give it the attention he deserved. Similarly, Cardinal Gerhard Müller, the former head of the Congregation for uh, the um, Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, also releases his statement, and this perhaps is most important for bishops wondering where to go, trying to straighten out in their heads what to do with this. Cardinal Muller, as the former head of the Holy Office, the Congregation for Doctrine of Faith, um, a, a great theologian, um, has come out with a condemnation of this new document. And here's some of the highlights. Again, go to lifesightnews.com for the full statement, but here are some of the highlights. He says, and I quote, the document which has neither now, and, and get this, he says, the document which was neither discussed nor approved by the General Assembly of Cardinals and Bishops of this dicastery, in other words, the dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith, so it went without being approved by the Doctrine of Faith dicastery, which is normal procedure for uh, even papal documents. And here it is, an issue of such great magnitude, not done that way. Um, says he, um, the document, it says, acknowledges that the hypothesis it proposes is new and that it is based primarily on the pastoral magisterium of Pope Francis. Cardinal Muller adds, there are no biblical texts or texts of the fathers and doctors of the church or previous documents of the magisterium to support the conclusions of fiducia supplicants of this document. He, he adds, why then is it necessary to broaden the meaning of blessing if the blessing as understood in the Roman ritual already goes beyond the blessing given in the sacrament? So there's this new thing in the document where they're expanding the meaning of a blessing. But the cardinal says, wait a minute, we already have permission in the Roman ritual to give these extra blessings. What are you doing by creating a different one? He answers that question as he says, the reason is that the blessings contemplated by the Roman ritual are only possible over things, places, or circumstances that do not contradict the law or the spirit of the gospel. And this is the point that the dicastery of the doctrine of faith wants to overcome since it wants to bless couples in circumstances such as same-sex relationships that contradict the law and the spirit of the gospel. Cardinal Muller says, It is true that the church can add new sacramentals to existing ones, but she cannot change the meaning in such a way as to trivialize sin, especially an ideologically charged cultural situation that also misleads the faithful. And this is exactly what's going on with this. And this change of meaning is precisely what happens in FS, this fiducia supplicants document, which invents a new category of blessings beyond those associated with either sacrament or blessing as the church has understood them. Cardinal Muller also says that the pastoral blessing can include situations that are contrary to the gospel. Notice that only sinful persons are blessed here, but that by blessing the couple, it is the sinful relationship itself that is blessed. Now, he adds, God cannot send his grace upon a relationship that is directly opposed to him and cannot be ordered toward him. Sexual intercourse outside of marriage, 
qua sexual intercourse cannot bring people closer to God and therefore cannot open itself to God's blessing. Therefore, if this blessing were given, its only effect would be to confuse the people who receive it or attend it. They would think that God has blessed what he cannot bless. This pastoral blessing would, ni- would be neither pastoral nor a blessing. It is true that Cardinal Fernandez, in later statements uh, to the press and so on, said that it is not the union that is blessed, but the couple. However, this actually, as says Cardinal Muller, this is emptying a word of its meaning, since what defines a couple as a couple is precisely there being a union. So there is a detailed analysis that uh, Cardinal Muller gives, and you can check it out all at lifesightnews.com. He says one thing that is really stunning, and it's this. Blessing a reality that is contrary to creation is not only impossible, it is blasphemy. Go check out his full statement at lifesightnews.com. Pray for the church. Pray for the conversion of Pope Francis, and I wish you all a happy and holy Christmas. For LifeSite News, this is John Henry Weston. 